Who fucking knows? I ran out. I ran out of my stuff. Okay, here we go. Ooh, delicious. All right. Are we ready? It's one o'clock. Might as well do something with ourselves. Sit around touching our PP. <laughs> Here we go. The following information may make you feel smarter, but will not actually increase your IQ. I got him! So don't get cocky. This is about what's going to happen. Welcome to Geek Life. Geek Life. Live. Welcome back, guys, on today's show. What did Project Phoenix tell us? And the results are in from the California Wage Hike. And do you know the Pickle Man? And how can you join the Redneck Air Force? All this and much, much more we discuss here on Deacon Live. For the next 16 minutes or so, we get you up to date on the viral videos and news stories that you might have missed over the last seven days. How are you? How are things? How are things going? Are you doing all right? Are you surviving? I know, I know, you're surviving the hurricane. Hurricane Helene up in, in North Carolina. Now, we broadcast just outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. A little town on the east side of Charlotte called Marshville. So we're not, we're not affected by all the stuff that you're seeing on the news or anything like that. It's mostly towards the, the North Carolina, up in the mountains, uh, and closer to Tennessee and stuff. That All that mudslides and flooding and stuff that's going on. So we're pretty much safe. We're, uh, we're buoyant here for the most part. But this new storm that's coming through, was it Milton? I need my stapler. I need my stapler. Milton is a Category 5 right now in the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, it's heading to Tampa. And it, it's going to, it's God almighty. I'm so glad that we're out of there. But we still have houses down there. My dad sold his house uh, when my mom passed away. And he's literally in between like Orlando and Tampa in the Claremont area. He sold his house. That house is going to be gone. It's going to be gone. That the the whole place, it's going to get annihilated if it comes through at a Category Five. It, the whole entire Central Florida area, it's going to get wiped out. Oh, we'll dive into that a little bit later. No, no, no. The woe was me just yet. We got a lot of stuff to talk about. Lots to get into. My wife is out of town. Yep, I'm uh, bacheloring it up again. And it always seems like when my wife goes out of town, a hurricane comes through. I don't know if there's something, you know. There's always a. It's either a hurricane. Or my wife. The two are never in the same room at the same time. So I don't know if there's a conspiracy there. But no, she's on. A, she's doing work duty, meeting the big wigs out there in Phoenix, uh, Arizona. She said to me, it's hot. <laughs> it's 107. 107? She's like, yeah, it's hot. You walk out of the hotel room and bam, that wall of heat just hits you in the face. I said, yeah, it's uh, here in Charlotte, North Carolina. I think the high today was 76, which was nice. Cool breeze. That cold front's coming through pushing all that that moisture down to the Floridians down there. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Florida. I know I was born and raised in Orlando, Florida. I know what you're going through, uh, but it's nice and cool here. And she's like, yeah, it, it's steaming hot. Why would anyone live out here? Well, first of all, there's no hurricanes out there, so that's a plus. Uh, she's out there for a couple days. She'll be back hopefully Thursday if the winds aren't too bad here in the Charlotte Douglas Airport. Uh, hopefully they'll land that plane straight on the track. Now, because my my uh, because my wife is out of town, and uh, my dad, I don't want to say he gets neglected. He's not neglected. You know, he's he's the uh, the owner of his own right, his his regime, whatever he wants to do, he can do it. But one thing he does mention to me is that he likes to uh, go out to lunch and have a beer or two. I'm like, Dad, feel free, go ahead and do it. Well, I'm 78 years old. <laughs> if I have a beer, I'll crash into a tree. And I said, okay, dad. He goes, I prefer it when you take me out to lunch is what he says. So my wife's out of town. I, I took the opportunity. I said, dad, I'll take you out to lunch. Uh, because I think a couple days prior, my wife and I went out to dinner together and he was kind of like, okay, I'll just eat leftovers, you know, all right, guilt trip. So I took my dad out to, to lunch and you know, I, I drink a beer too when I'm at lunch, and I like to stay within my safety perimeters. I don't want to sit there and you know guzzle 15 pitchers of beer or whatever, anything like that, and get back on the road. That's ridiculous. So I, I said to my dad, "There's a not a biker bar, but it's geared as a biker bar. It's called Iron Thunder, which is uh, the next town over, in the in the next town over." 
And, you know, they got a big motorcycle, big Harley in the middle of it, and all the TVs for all the sports and stuff. And they got a big horseshoe bar. It's nice to sit there. And cold beer, great service, great food. Believe it or not, really, really good food. Everything I've had there has always been great. So I said, Dad, uh, knocked on his door, you know, Dad, huh? who is it? <laughs> I'm the only one in the house. It's me. Oh, what do you want? And I go, uh, how about you and me go to lunch today? This is yesterday. He goes, oh, where are we going? I said, let's go to Iron Thunder and uh, we'll have a couple beers and we'll sit at the bar and, you know, have a, a meal or something, you know, lunch, light lunch or something like that. He goes, that kind of sounds good. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So what time are we going? You know, what time is dinner? 4.30? No. <laughs> what, uh, I said, let's go. I, I, I always promise myself never crack a beer open before noon. So I've always stuck by that mantra. Even in my early, early days of, of being a, a, an adolescent, you know, 16 years old, never crack a beer before 12 o'clock. So I said, we'll leave the house about quarter to 12 and then, uh, by the time we get there, you know, it'll be 12 o'clock and I'll, I'll stay within my parameters of my, my rule, my mantra. So we get up there, we sit down, uh, Mick ultra is on special today, 250 drafts. We sit there. My dad has one beer and I have, you know, two to one. We're going next to each other, have beer. We're sitting there and we put our order in. My dad finally figures out what he wants. I'm like, just get whatever dad, you know? So he gets something, I order my thing, and across the bar is like one guy just sitting there. Then it's lunchtime, so now the lunch lunchtime crew is coming in. It's 12.30 now. We've been there for you know, a good 20 minutes or something. I'm on my second beer. These two guys come in. I know exactly who they are. I am not friends with these two guys. They don't know it, but, <laughs> but I am not friends with these two guys. They sit at the bar across from us. And there are the, these two guys, everyone in the place knows them. You know, hey, Jared, hey, Tommy, hey, you know, Patricia, whatever. Hey, what's going on? You know, did you see that race the other day? And these are good old backwoods. I mean, trailer park looking fucking guys. Okay. You know, there's nothing, <laughs> nothing spectacular about them. They, uh, they look like, uh, one guy looks like Pizza the Hut from the Spaceballs movie. The other guy looks like a homeless guy standing on the corner with a sign that says, you know, we'll work for food or handouts or anything like that. And the reason why I say I'm not friends with these guys is that these are the two guys that run the, I say run, they are the only show in Marshville Radio. I say Marshville Radio. We have a, we have a, a small little radio station that's here in Marshville. I think it's like 5,000 watt station. So it barely, <laughs> the signal barely passes the brick walls that the, that they're broadcasting out of. And when I first moved here to North Carolina from Orlando, mind you, you know, now I was, I was on down on radio in, in Miami or not Miami in Orlando, I moved up here. I said, well, you know, let me just find a small little, little radio station. Maybe I can hook up with them and maybe be, you know, co-host or producer or something like that, or just be something funny on the air. Reached out to them. No, no, no. We're not looking for anyone. Now the Marshville radio starts at seven o'clock in the morning. They do like news and weather and all that stuff, but it's not, I mean, it's literally these two guys and the guy who runs the, the radio station is the, the, one of the co-hosts. Basically what this guy did, he bought the license. He bought the radio station. He's part of the Union County Council Board member. So he's got a little bit of bucks and he bought the station for, I think like, I don't know, 300 something thousand dollars. And he's making it his uh, barking tool, his, you know, to get his agenda apart. Now they do normal zany, wacky <laughs> Monday through Friday shows. And I said, well, I could be a part of that. And I reached out to them and they're like, no, 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 we're, we're not hiring. We're not hiring. And then I hear, you know, one of our new hires is on the air with it. You know, I'm like, oh, fuck you guys. So then I started, I started, uh, badgering their content. I'm like, they're telling like dad joke Monday, uh, eat a, eat a something different Tuesday, uh, swap meet Wednesday. I mean, I'm telling you, it is backwoods radio. And I'm like, God, you guys have got 
you've got this attention of these people in here. You've got to update your format. You've got to do something. And I was reaching out to him, and finally, I just got to the point where um, the main guy was like, "Going, you know, what do we? What do you want us to do, Travis? What do you want us to do? We're we're not we're we're bound by you know religion. We're because we are in somewhat of a religious area." And I'm like, "Going." And I'm emailing them back and forth, and I'm like, well, you need to do this, and this is what I can do, and this is what, well, we're fine. We're fine with exactly what we want to do and all that stuff. And I'm like going, well, fuck you then. You know, <laughs> you've never had, you never knew what you had until you've not had it, that type deal. <laughs> you know, I'm pointing at them if you're watching this here on the YouTube video. And so I was just kind of, I had this sour taste in my mouth. And the Marshville radio goes off at noon. They're done. And then they just run like syndicated shows and it, nothing represents Marshville. Nothing represents this area. Nothing represents this city, this county, this, this state. It's all these. And that's where they're getting their money from. They don't want, you know, a, an actual talent to come in there. Now, let me explain something when I say about talent. And I use that term very loosely talking about myself. I looked at their listening audience because you can find that out. They are on a 3,000 listener plus or minus 500 per, I think it's per month, something like that. Because they don't broadcast very far. The town of Marshville itself is only 2,500 people. They barely pull in 3,000 listeners per month. They say 10,000 views on a website, you know, because I pulled the media packet and stuff. They say, you know, 100,000 listeners worldwide and all this other stuff. Yeah, because they're, they're going on the syndicated shows. This show... For all the listeners out there who've been listening to the Deacon Live show for the last 10 years, this show right here that you're listening to pulls in almost 17,000 listeners per week. Per week. And all our old shows are still available. They're still on, they're still getting downloads, you know, 9,000, you know, 5,000, 5,000, 9,000 every week on shows that we've done over seven years ago. There's still a big audience. So I sit there. And I sip on my beer and I look at these two chuckleheads. One guy's got a, <laughs> the Pizza the Hut guy's got a lazy eye. He's got glasses as thick as bottle caps or bottom, what's a bottle? I don't know what the term is there. The other guy sitting there, uh, they split a pizza and I'm just like, <sighs> my dad's talking to me. And the other day, you know, my right ear, <laughs> I'm looking at him just steaming. And I caught eye contact with him. Now, I don't know if they know what I look like. Um, I know I've been on the Marshville Facebook page. I've done all that stuff. I, yeah, I'm, people out there know me. I, I get recognized sometimes when I go into Walmart. Hey, aren't you? Yes, I'm that guy. Yeah, he go, oh, what did you mean by this? I'm like, going, no, no, I'm not that guy. <laughs> Walk away from him. But I was just sitting there, Steve, and I'm like going, hey, these fuckers. Because to me, outside of doing this, that would be an ideal job to go into a place and not have to worry about paying all the bills and all that stuff. I just want to walk into a place, sit down, do my shtick, sign everything out, you know, maybe do a couple edits and stuff and then turn everything over to someone else and let them do that. That's my ideal job. But unfortunately, these two chuckleheads are, are in my way here in the local area. Well, fuck them. Maybe someone out there will hear this and go, hey, come and join us. We'll, we'll do that. All right, guys, we got a lot to talk about, lots to get into. And Elon Musk is not the, the friend of a lot of people right now. And it's not because he likes Trump. It's not because he's a bazillionaire. It's because he's what he's doing out there for the hurricane victims. And you might have heard this. You might have heard that. Well, I'm going to actually decipher that when we come back. So stick around. You're listening to Oh, I almost forgot what show I'm on. You're listening to Deacon Live right here on Profit Radio. I'll be right back. Welcome back to Deacon Live. You want to be famous? You want to be podcast famous? Well, you can do that if you go over to Profit Radio, proud sponsors of the Deacon Live podcast. Go to Profit Radio, P-R-O-P-H-E-T radio.com at the top of the page. It says, leave a, mes leave a message for Deacon Live. Uh, be heard. Speak right into a device. If you've got a microphone on it, you can be podcast famous. You can put a fake name in there. I don't care. Uh, they do want your email address just to make sure that you're not a robot. I don't know why a robot would <laughs> leave us a message, but still, nonetheless, you can be part of that. It's not an email grab or anything. Just speak right into your device. It comes right to our inbox, and we'll play it on this podcast. We broadcast every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, just outside of Charlotte, North Carolina, a little town we like to call Marshville. And if you don't get it in quick enough, we'll play it on the very next podcast as well. And you can be podcast famous. You can be heard right here in the studio alongside of me, sitting here in my little studio here in Marshville and not in a clunky warehouse over at the uh, other radio station, the Marshville radio station. Now, 
<clears throat> do you want to join a redneck Air Force? With all the stuff that's been going on with Helene uh, up in the North Carolina area, an all-volunteer group run by military veterans has set up operation in Suwannona, North Carolina, immediately following the destruction caused by Hurricane Helene to provide humanitarian aid and emergency services to those impacted by the storm. Last week, Blaze Media was on the ground with a volunteer group which has dubbed themselves the Redneck Air Force. Blaze News uh, Julio Rosas provided first-hand accounts of the team efforts, explaining that the group has set up a forward operation base in, Harley da- at a, in a Harley-Davidson dealership that was previously flooded by the hurricane. The volunteers worked quickly, efficiently, established a well, well-oiled machine, machine that ran communications, delivered supplies, and uh, allocated personal help to those in need. Former Green Beret Adam Smith recruited several men and women to assist with the coordination and flying out critical needed supplies to those impacted areas after they observed the lack of assistance from the federal government. Many of the volunteers' emergency responders provide aid in the region have expressed similar frustrations regarding the Biden-Harris administration response or their lack of. Now, they're going <laughs> to, on a, li- a lighter note or a side note, you know, Milton's going to come in here and you're going to see uh, the way this president, um, the current president and vice president are going to react in office under pressure. And you're going to see it right now. This is the what they call the, the October surprise. This is going to be the October surprise to, to show how well they handle this stuff under pressure. The Blaze Media also joined Mercury One, a charity founded by Blaze Media co-founder Glenn Beck, which has partnered with the United Cajun Navy, a nonprofit organization, to deliver supplies to perform a search or and perform search and rescue operations in the affected zones. Blaze News Tonight host uh, Jill Savage told Blaze News, "Our day in North Carolina was one of the one of the one." Let's see, was one none of us will ever forget. The military veterans and others jumped into action and started organizing all the incoming supplies. Your donations through Mercury One have been a lifetime, have been a lifeline for these communities when nothing else has come through. When the government was nowhere to be found, we are blessed to see the neighbors helping each other. Uh, Representative Corey Mills of Republican Florida was on the ground with the Redneck Air Force and Mercury Run over the past week, participating and providing disaster relief. So this is this is something typical that I've found here in North Carolina. You know, when you think North Carolina, you think a lot of backwoods, and it's true. I mean, there's a reason why you think all that. Charlotte it, itself is a major, major uh, financial hub. Then you got Raleigh. Uh, you've got, you know, all that's a big hub there as far as financial and and like a big city type deal. You, you, you know, you think tall buildings and, and whatnot. The area that, that's impacted are these small little neighborhoods and, and townships and stuff where they, they rely on each other for help. You know, there, there's no like Walmart in the middle of these towns. You might have to go a couple towns over. So these people, the North Carolinians, and I'm proud to say that I am one now. I always, you know, I always be a Floridian. You cut me open, I'll bleed sand. But I'll tell you what, these North Carolinians, they jump in and they help each other. And that's what this uh, Redneck Air Force is doing over there in uh, in North uh, North Carolina. The North North Carolina, where all the stuff is. North, North, North Carolina. Now, this billionaire, Elon Musk, you might have heard of him. He's trying to help the best way he can. Now, for the most part, I think Elon Musk, he's a smart man. He's kind of, kind of awkward at times. The whole Saturday Night Live thing, he was kind of awkward. Uh, didn't really land on a couple jokes. I, you know, I think he's on the spectrum a little bit, but he's a smart man. You know, it, for him being on the spectrum, we're all on the spectrum. It's just some of us are lighter shades of gray than the, the rainbow colors that are on the other side. But... Elon Musk, he he's a smart man. He's a very intelligent man. Socially, eh, he's kind of awkward. But what he's doing right now that he's getting a lot of flack for is billion, billionaire Elon Musk, the richest man in the world. Is he? I thought uh, Bezos and Mrs. Bezos were. Anyways, recently announced Hurricane Helene victims will get free internet. They'll get free internet service through his Starlink, but there's a major cap, catch. The 
Come November, they'll have to pay. They'll have to pay. Come November, they'll have to pay. That's what the article says. Tech, tech publication registered reporter, the, the Register reported Tuesday that Starlink's offer for free satellite-powered internet service to the areas impacted by Helene uh, comes at a hefty price tag. While the normal residence subscription is $120 a month, has been waived for the first 30 days of service. Anyone that is affected in the area hoping to use the Starlink, Starlink to get online and connect with the resources will still have to pay for the hardware to actually set up the internet connection. While taking into account the cost of shipping, <laughs> taxes, hurricane victims can expect to pay roughly $400. Oh, Elon, what? You had it. You had it. Free internet. You can have you can have free internet with, with all the area and that stuff. That's my Elon impression. Read further into the de- <coughs> excuse me into the details on Starlink's help page for Hurricane Helene. One must think it's a ploy to bag new customers in the fur flung place in the far flung places. Sorry, um, the site posted on the site posted a YouTube video showing the Starlink sign up page looks more like for residents in the area of Musk singling it out for free internet service, while the second half of the Helena Re- Relief uh, subscriptions options for 0 to $120 a month residential. Hold the hold site on. posted a YouTube video showing what the Starlink sign-up page looks like for residents in the areas uh, Musk singled out for the free internet service. While there is a second Helena Relief subscription option for $0 next to the $120 a month for residential subscription, the final total comes out to $393.91. When factoring the $349 worth of hardware, $20 for shipping and handling, and $24.91 for taxes. Boone, North Carolina uh, residency, or resident Kenny uh, Bog, Bog, Bogham, Bog, Bogman, Botman, Botman, <laughs> figure it out. Described by the registered as a local philosophy professor and IT pro, wrote in his Facebook group that Elon Musk offers a 30-day Starlink subscription trial is a crafty bait-and-switch wolf in sheep's clothing uh, scam meant to take advantage of people instead of helping them. Uh, once our internet service is restored, Starlink will be irrelevant and the service uh, becomes a $400 doorstop. So what they're saying is, you know, once they get the, the regular service, they don't need Starlink anymore. And they actually says it takes two to three weeks to actually get the, the Starlink stuff out to your location. So think about it. You pay, oh, I need internet. Okay, you, you buy all this stuff. It's $300, let's say $400, $400. Okay, it takes uh, two to three weeks to get it out to you. Well, by that time, pretty much we should be at a point, at a point to where we've got somewhat of an internet, a little bit of power. I mean, you know, you can bounce that back and forth uh, to the real bad destructed areas. But I mean, you know, just the, the normal outliers and stuff. We're all like going, okay, we just need power. Uh, we'll fix, we'll fix the house and all that stuff. And once you get the power, then we can fire up everything if it's not ruined. Because uh, you know, internet, my modem and stuff sunk under water and stuff. And uh, and then we'll have internet. So he he's trying to do good, but unfortunately, the the Starlink shouldn't. You shouldn't have to pay for the stuff if you're going to offer it for free. But I can see where. You're, you're still buying modems, you know, your modems underwater. So if you're going to pay for something, go ahead and pay for his stuff. Pay for my stuff. <laughs> All right, guys, when we come back, Disney's getting a lot of flack, too, as far as this Milton hurricane coming at them. And uh, I'll dive into that story when we come back. Why are, why are they getting a whole lot of flack for what they're doing? So stick around. I'll be right back. Stick around. You're listening to e- Oh, Jesus. Stick around. You're listening to Deacon Live right here on Profit Radio. I'll be right back.
you miss me? <laughs> stupid, stupid, stupid. Okay. <clears throat> Welcome back to Deacon Live. You want something for free? Well, we will give you something for free. Well, what you got to do to get it is go over to ProfitRadio.com. Proud sponsors of all the uh, proud sponsors of Deacon Live, and also all the other fine programming that comes out of this. Oh fuck! I got to start all that over again. <laughs> start it over. Delete. Yes. Get my mind set here. Welcome back to Deacon Live. You want something for free? Well, we'll give it to you. But what you got to do for me is go over to Profit Radio. Proud sponsors of Deacon Live. That's Profit Radio. P R O P H E T Radio. Uh, pick your out. Pick yourself out something over there, and uh, you can see all the other fine programming that comes out of this uh, studio. Grab yourself something over there: stickers, magnets, uh, keychains, or whatever. Tell us what you want. Fill out the little form, and we'll mail it out to you here in the United States. Uh, everyone overseas, sorry, it's going to take a little bit longer to get to you. Just. Because of the nature of being overseas. Sorry, we we broadcast out of Charlotte, North Carolina. I, I just can't like make a paper airplane and throw it. Now my wife is out of town. She's in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, uh, and this right now we have a hur hurricane sitting in uh, at Tampa at Tampa's front door called Hurricane Milton. Now. My wife and I are both born and raised in Orlando, Florida, and in 2004, we had the trifecta that came through. That was Hurricane Charlie, uh, Hurricane Francis, and Hurricane Jean came through there, and literally just like crisscross all within like a three to four week period of time, just kind of crisscross the whole entire state, but they came through. One came through at a three, one came through at a two, and one just kind of trickled through as a, as a one. But there's a study right now showing in 2009, a simulation was conducted to imagine what a strike of a Category 5 would have in the Tampa Bay area. The result, a chilling scenario with tens of thousands missing, hundreds of lives lost, and a catastrophic damage to the region. Now, this was done in 2009. The exercise was called Project Phoenix. It was sponsored by the Federal Emergency Management Agency, which is FEMA, and the Florida Department of Emergency Management and designed to help local government, business, and emergency services prepare for the unthinkable. Well, guess what? It's getting ready to happen right now. While the simulation model worked on the basis of a hypothetical storm, the concept of a similar devastation feels all too real as Florida residents right now urge to flee to safety as Hurricane Milton is expected to hit the area as in the coming days as a Category 5. Now, when I say the coming days, we broadcast on Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's supposed to hit shore by 9 p.m. this evening. So we'll see what happens there. Tampa Bay, Tampa Mayor Jane Casser has warned Floridians this week, literally, it's this is a literally catastrophic, <laughs> it's going to be a catastrophic <clears throat> and can say that without any dramatization whatsoever. Uh, if you choose to stay in those evacuated areas, you are going to die. Devastation imagined by uh, Project Phoenix, the hurricane forming in the Gulf before making landfall directly over Tampa. Now, this is what the Project Phoenix was talking about, uh, directly making landfall over Tampa Bay. After the simulation, a 10-minute docu document documentary 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 was produced combining simulations weather reports and archive footage from other storms illustrating the potential devastation uh, and potential devastation the devastation in the region is almost imaginable unimaginable they said let's see do they have the thing so the lessons that learned that they the lessons that they learned during project phoenix wasn't <clears throat> wasn't just to imagine disaster but to identify weaknesses and preparation to give local governments the emergency services and a chance to pinpoint ga gaps in the response time and coordination. The 2009 exercise, along with its updated 2020 version of Project Phoenix 2.0, has been used repeatedly by emergency planners across Florida to sharpen their responses and capabilities. Following the Project Phoenix, emergency response plans were revised and ensured quicker coordinations between state and local governments to improve disaster relief strategies. In just two weeks after the deadly Hurricane Helene, 
Helene, I want to call it Helena for some reason, residents of the Sunshine State are bracing for the impact, uh, which they have currently classified it as a Category 5 st storm by officials predicting the same catastrophic damage suggested in the model Project Phoenix. All right, so then you can go on <laughs> saying, you know, conspiracy, government's uh, controlling the weather and all that stuff. Meanwhile, uh, on Saturday, <clears throat> meanwhile, on Saturday, FEMA urged Floridians to prepare for the storm making landfall with AccuWeather Chief Meteorologist Jonathan Porter described Milton as a historical once-in-a-lifetime storm for Floridians. So st step aside, Hurricane Andrew. You're going to have um, Hurricane Milton now. What a wimpy name. I'm sorry. <laughs> when I think Milton, I think, I know, I know, I know, I'm trying to make light of the subject, but I, when I think Hurricane Milton, I think of the guy from Office Space. Can you, can you a stapler? My red stapler. I thought I had a stapler. Milton, shut up. But someone right now who is trying to be not wimpy, and by the force of backlash from everyone in Florida, <clears throat> where are we at here? Disney World closes its doors ahead of the Hurricane 5, uh, Category 5 Hurricane Milton. Orlando's tourism, uh, Orlando's tourism machine has begun grinding to a halt this Tuesday with at least three major theme parks and the major airport announcing closures ahead of Hurricane Milton. Walt Disney World were refusing. Let me give you a little background. They do not close for anything. Hurricane comes through. Fuck it. We're open. We're staying open. Uh, no matter what storm came through, they were always, always open. Now, <clears throat> a lot of times you can say, well, that's good or bad. You know, are you going to make these people go into work? No, a lot of those people stayed at the park because nine times out of 10, they're going to have their own power. They're going to have their own generators. They're going to have everything. They got food and you know, cover and shelter and all that stuff. But, you know, people, they, Walt Disney goes, you know, if, if unless we're on fire, we're not shutting the doors. Well, this time they are shutting the doors. Them, alongside of uh, Universal Studios, SeaWorld, all announced on Tuesday, which is yesterday, to uh, that they will close the theme parks and, res and respective entertainment facilities on Wednesdays, with the latter two being closed all the way till Thursday. It's likely that Disney World will also remain closed on Thursday. It has already canceled Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party at the Magic Kingdom. Well, it's going to be scary if you're there. While Universal Studios has canceled Halloween Horror Nights. Ah, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we didn't go down there. Scheduled for both days. <clears throat> uh, officials at the happiest place on earth said all prepaid booking experiences will automatically be refunded within 7 to 10 business days, but the park's cancellation policy will be suspended until further notice. The theme parks joined Orlando International Airport, which said to cease operations Wednesday morning. The airport is national is the nation's seventh busiest, uh, seventh busiest, and Florida's most trafficked airport. But Disney World had, <coughs> excuse me, Disney World had said earlier, <coughs> God damn it, in the day that they would stay open during the Category Five hurricane plan to only close the campgrounds and the renting cabins. That was it. They were just going to leave everything open. The only indication that Disney Springs, the only indication at Disney Springs that the hurricane was coming has been a closure of the hot air balloon rides closed due to the hurricane and the electric scene, electric sign says be safe or stay safe. All other stores and restaurants and shopping and dining experience and now they're just shutting the whole place the whole entire place down. Now in a deleted scene or delete a video, influencer uh, Cecilia Bachman shared her behind-the-scenes look at a packing of her packing process with her husband just hour before they were uh, sent to head to the airport for a family trip. According to People Magazine, many, many online then slammed her decision to travel to the theme park amid the storm. I just had to go to through. I just had. I just had to go through Helene, and there's no other way I would put my children through the direct path of a hurricane, especially not this one. One person commented, uh, another also said that they, they lost all my respect for her. So now <clears throat> Disney themselves are, are shutting the doors. It's kind of like Waffle House. Waffle House doesn't shut the doors. Disney does not shut the doors. They're the same uh, in itself. But... Uh, 
studies have shown, uh, I say studies have shown, they're, uh, they're actually talking about the, these two days, these two days that Disney will be closed, Disney World and all the other, you know, all the, its entities of Disney World will lose almost $200 million per day. So, okay. I mean, <laughs> how do you feel about that? I'd like to hear your opinion. I'd like to hear your voice. And the way you can do that is go over to ProfitRadio.com. At the top of the page, it says leave a message for Deacon Live. We'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear your opinion. Do you think Disney should keep the doors open during the hurricane? Because once the hurricane goes through, man, it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful weather. And what if you're staying in a hotel? What if you're out of town and your hotel's fine? And what are you going to do? You know, you got three screaming kids in your hotel and uh and there's nothing to do let's go to disney world <laughs> the lines will be short all right guys uh we yeah we'd love to hear from you and the way you can do that is go to profit radio at the top of the page it says be heard and leave us a message it comes right to our inbox all right guys when we come back this guy first day on the job did great and then he did not do great he uh actually almost died first day on the job and I'll dive into his story when we come back. So stick around. You're listening to Deacon Live right here on Profit Radio. I'll be right back. Welcome back to Deacon Live. Make sure you follow us on our social networks. Oh, wait. <laughs> no, I'm not on Facebook still. This is week number four, by the way. But we are available on TikTok. We are available on YouTube, uh, LinkedIn, if you want to get a part. <laughs> <laughs> go over there that wasted time space over there uh but for all our social networks and stuff uh, you can go over to profitradio.com at the top of the page says social contacts some of them are working some of them are not i haven't upgraded that uh over there but we were on uh, facebook and instagram but uh my account got flagged because i got hacked but i'm doing good the only thing the only withdrawal that i have about not being on facebook and you know the mecca of you know the mecca of meta was that um I I didn't see that Pete Rose died. That was the only thing. Now I've got news sources and outlets and push notifications on my phone and everything, and I get my my uh, information from other sources, more reliable sources for the most part. They're, it's not filtered out. Um, but yeah, that was the only drawback that I I found out that Pete Rose died, <laughs> 82 years old. But nonetheless, I'm still not on Facebook. Uh, I I said I'm not going to get on it until after the election. Uh, once my account gets all cleared up and stuff, I'm still going to stay off of it until after the election. But for the most part, if you want to find out all our other locations, you can find us on YouTube, TikTok, um, Twitter, or whatever Twitter, whatever Elon calls it now. <laughs> you can find that over there. <clears throat> One of the, the biggest debates that we've been having here in our country is the minimum wage. The minimum wage, uh, we need to have a, a living minimum wage. No, we don't. I mean, we do have need to have a living minimum wage, but... You minimum wage is set for the for the standard of this is an entry job. This is a non skilled job. You don't need to have a, a degree. You don't need to even need to graduate high school. If you, for whatever reason, are just complete <laughs> dumb dumb, and you uh, you can't you know, and you want to get a job, this is the minimum that they have to pay you. You can get a job, and they're not going to pay you like you know, oh, you're a dumb dumb, you know. Three dollars an hour. No, there's a there's a set minimum wage, and and that allows you to at least get an apartment or get you know rent roommates or anything like that. But you're like going, well, Deacon, you know they can't do that now. You know the the inflation's and the cost of housing and rent and all that stuff's up in the air. Hey, that's not my fault. It's the people you put in office. That this did not happen uh, eight years ago, if not nine years ago. This has been happening. This has been coming down the pipeline. It was getting ready to stop, and you guys stopped it, and this is what you're dealing with right now. But I digress. There is a whole thing about California was raising the minimum wage uh, payment for, uh, was it, uh, how did they word it for like fast food operators and, and, and things of that nature? We're raising the minimum wage to 20 bucks an hour. And then you're like going, well, that's going to make the hamburgers that were, you know, 99 cents cost $5. That's going to make all the food prices go up because all the managers and all the, the franchisees are going to have to raise their prices and stuff. Well, this has been almost, almost a full year of them raising the, the minimum wage to $20. Now it's over a two, two year period, I believe. So right now the minimum wage over in California for restaurant workers and stuff like that. 
service workers is sitting around 16 17 bucks an hour which is still not too bad but california's controversial new 20 dollars minimum wage for workers at large fast food restaurants has not, has not led to the widespread job losses or steep menu prices according to the new report from the uc berkeley institute for research and labor labor and in and, and employment <coughs> easy for you to say so the assembly bill 12 1228 which took effect april 1st raising the wages for hundreds of thousands of people employees who have been earning an average of 16 21 per hour as of july the state has approximately 750,000 fast food jobs roughly 11,000 more than they had before the law took effect according to the united states bureau of labor statistics we find that the policy increased the average hour, hourly pay remarkably 18%, but yet did not reduce employment. The industry, the industry, the industry trade groups and lobbyists, however, argue that the data does not paint the accurate picture of employment in California's fast food sector. One of the things that's not included in this is net is the net change. Uh, Rebecca Paxson, director of the Research Employment Policies Institute, told recently, saying that it's not, so it's not the, it's not measuring the number of folks who have lost their jobs, gained their jobs, or turned over. It's also not measuring the folks that have been reduced. There are still employed, there are still employed, but their hours have been reduced. The researchers scraped online data and determined that the menu prices in California's fast food restaurants increased only to about 3.7% overall, roughly 15 cents on a $4 hamburger, since this AB 12, 1228 took effect. About 62% of the increased costs were passed on to the customers in higher prices, suggesting that restaurants' profit margins were above competitive levels before the policy. According to a substantial share of of the cost increase customers however found that some prices increases increases to be more significant for example an Ur the urban base in and out burger its burger prices raised about 25 cents chipotle has raised its uh, chicken burrito price to uh 8.3 percent higher despite despite that it appears that the industry has a largely has largely weathered the minimum wage storm. The study suggests that fast food industry shrieks that the sky is falling was a, a little bit over the top. In fact, in fact, the employee, the employment remained steady after the wage hike indicates fast food restaurants saw no catast uh, catastrophic increases in operating costs and at least nothing that couldn't be addressed with a simple modest product pr uh, modest price hike in recent months many fast food chains including mcdonald's wendy's and popeyes have launched their new low value menus or low cost value menus well it's the same thing isn't it to court customers who may have balked at the uh, rising the prices over the past several years california voters decide on november whether to approve proposition 32 which proposes raising the minimum wage for all employees to 18 dollars an hour by 2026 the minimum wage the minimum wage fast food chains would not be affected. So there you go. They say basically, hey, you know, what camera am I on? Am I on me? They were saying, you know, oh, you're going to raise the, the rate of all the employees. Uh, then you're, they're going to raise the price of the food. No, the, the thing was, McDonald's and all those people are already making a shitload of money and when i say a shitload of money their their profit margin was well in in the the 30 mid 30s almost 40 percent so when they had to increase the wages of the employees so okay they lost a little bit of money they lost a little bit of this but they're picking away at it by just bumping the prices up you know eight percent two percent six percent which which is fine Everyone thought, you know, a $5 or a $1 hamburger was going to go all the way at the five bucks. And that's not the case. And that's what they're finding out. So good. Maybe this lesson, maybe this model can be transferred over throughout the whole United States. Now, I don't know if, uh, if it's going to happen, but we'll see. It's a, it's a good jumping point for that. Now, speaking of jumping point, this guy right here, 
First day on the job, and it did not go very well for him at all. Your first day on the job can always be a very nervous one, especially if you're doing something uh, that you're not used to doing. Choosing what you do and what you wear while you're you're going... Hold on. Choosing what you're going to wear, where you're going to sit, and hoping that you don't embarrass yourself. But this last thing you probably... But that's the last thing you probably consider is the chance that you might have a freak accident. Sadly for this man, he ended up losing both of his legs just minutes into his first day. Oh, Jesus Christ. Hi, hi, sir. I'm here. All right, go over there. All right. Oh, my legs. Johnson, what happened to your legs? They're gone. They're gone. It was a miracle that John O'Neill survived after taking a job as a tree worker in in Colorado. The 33-year-old had been fitted with a court-ordered ankle monitor and reportedly ended up being the thing that got him in trouble. So if, you know, you've got an ankle monitor and stuff, he's obviously, obviously done something wrong. And he's got, you know, house arrest or whatever, but he's got an ankle monitor on his leg. Well... Not anymore. Just 15 minutes into the dirt, into the work day, he is now. He was throwing branches into the wood chipper. I know. Here we go. Everyone's cringing, and which leading him to get caught in it himself into the wood chipper. O'Neill had grabbed a branch with a fish hook shaped to it and chucked it into the machine. But the end of it was caught in his tracking device and dragged him and his legs in there with, into the wood chipper. Then hor- horrifically, the spinning blades of the wood chipper began slicing away his toes, his foot, his ankle, and then his legs. Stop it! <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> help! 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 The other guys are going, fucking rookies. Just looking at him going, fucking rookie. <laughs> Just letting him get all jumped up in there. While the man's co-workers were around doing their other jobs, no one could hear him screaming for help at first as they were all wearing ear protection. Yeah, those wood chippers are loud. You know what else is loud? Me screaming when my legs start coming off. It took a minute or two before my co-workers realized what happened, he said. Fearing for, fearing for his life, as the machine blades continued spinning, O'Neill began to fear the worst. Something happened in my brain Something happened in my brain to where I realized I was in fear for a lot more than just losing my leg or my foot. The pain was very, the pain was very, it was not almost there. I didn't really feel the pain as much as I thought I would when I was in trouble. I went from fight or flight. uh, It went from fight for my limb to fight for my life very fast. He decided to stay calm as possible, hoping that his heart rate would, hoping to keep his heart rate down as co-workers managed to pull him out of the blade, uh, got in the, as the, oh, Jesus Christ. He tried to stay as calm as possible, hoping to keep his heart rate down as the co-workers managed to pull him out as the blades got to his mid thighs, mid thighs. How long does that take to get there? During the helicopter ride to the hospital, he says that he technically died as his heart stopped and ended up having the remainder of his legs amputated, needing 15 pints of blood. Jesus Christ, how many pints does a normal body have? They essentially replace all my blood in my body, O'Neill says. It's beyond a miracle that John is with us. He is fighting harder than ever before. They're doing a GoFundMe and stuff. Uh, our friend was always uh, been pretty reckless and living life on the edge all while doing so being a warrior in life so here you go this guy (laughs) this guy shows up to his job he can't get a real job because you know he can't uh he, he you know he's got probably some kind of uh felony or whatever you know you're limited when you have a, a ankle monitor on so this guy's throwing limbs into a wood chipper and probably a good industrial one. I've seen them. And you, you throw it in there and this limb hooks them up and, and drags them in there. I, I don't know, man. I, 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 I would, I've worked with big wood chippers before. It, it takes a lot. Now, I, you know, I'm a big guy. I'm 6'2". You know, I'm 250 pounds. Uh, for a wood chipper to pull me in, that's not going to happen. Maybe uh, 
O'Neal here was maybe a small little skinny guy and he got hooked in there. Now, can he go back to, here we go, can we go back to the judge? Can we sue the state for the thing on his leg that caused him to almost die? You know, if he didn't have, if he wouldn't have had that on there, is that the reason why he got, you know, all chopped up? Are they obligated or, or, or are they, what's the, what's the word I'm looking for? Are they responsible? Because he has this, have you ever seen those uh, things on the, on the, your ankles? They're big. It's like having a TV box on the side of your foot. And they, you know, you wear all this stuff to protect yourself. You don't wear gloves. You don't wear gloves uh, as far as like um, any loose fitting gloves. Because those can get caught and stuff. You always keep your hair back. You got a helmet on. You got to do all that stuff. Even like in pr pr production warehouses and stuff, uh, protect uh, production facilities, you got to keep all that that loose clothing and stuff tight. And this guy had an ankle monitor, which was not a normal thing that we would have on your body, and it got hooked on something and dragged him right into the chipper. I think he's got a. I think he's got a case there. I'm, I swear to God, I, I I think he's got a case there. Find an attorney out there. All right, when we come back, this uh, person also has a case because she likes mayo so much she found a little surprise inside. I didn't know they were giving away prizes in the bottom of mayo containers. And I'll dive into what she found at the very bottom uh, when we come back. So stick around. You're listening to Deacon Live right here on Profit Radio. I'll be right back. Welcome back to Deacon Live. Make sure you follow. Oh, no, 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 no. Welcome back to Deacon Line. We'd love to hear from you. You can be podcast famous. You can be right along here in the studio with us. Go over to ProfitRadio.com, proud sponsors of Deacon Live. And at the top of the page says, be heard. Leave a message for Deacon Live. If you got a device, if you got a, one of your Apple phones <laughs> and you got your headset in, one of those Bluetooths or whatever, and you got a microphone on, just like if you're answering a phone call, hit that button, speak right into it. It says, I think, a hit, record, listen back, and then send. You can be anonymous if you want. Just put your email address in there so they know that you're not a robot. It's not an email grab or anything. They just want to make sure that you are a real person. And you are a real person because you're listening to the Deacon Line podcast, and we appreciate you. And make sure you can always share the podcast with everyone else. Tell them about it. Spread the news. Spread the love uh, that we are better than the little piece of shit <laughs> Marshville radio station that's here. Uh, that they sit there and they have their own agenda as far as trying to get their laws passed by the uh, the owner of the radio station who works on the the council or the I don't know what he does but it, it, it's not good it's not good news over there so <laughs> tell them I don't know what you want to tell them but just share us with all your friends let's do it that way um, we my wife and I went to a dinner with a bunch of her associates. And when I say associates, uh, not work people, it was horse people. They had a big clinic and everything. And we actually got into a discussion. This is how much fun horse parties, dinners are. We actually got into a debate, not a discussion, a debate between Duke's mayonnaise and Hellman's mayonnaise. And I said, I like Hellman's mayonnaise. Duke's tastes like shit. And you should have seen the wives and the husbands come like natives to North Carolina, like eyes lit up and like furl their brows and everything at me. And I was like, oh, what are you talking about? Hellman's is, is king. It's supreme. And they're like, oh, Duke's is so creamier. It's, it's so when you pull it out, I said, yeah, it looks manufactured like it's fake. At least when you open up Hellman's, you can see like air bubbles where they whip the oil and the eggs and everything together to create this beautiful lushness of lard and <laughs> oil and goodness. I love Hellman's mayonnaise. I will literally take a spoonful. I, I use that term loosely. I'll When I make a sandwich, I'll leave a little bit extra on the spoon so just so I can go this. Mmm. Ah, delicious. My wife always goes, Bleh. <laughs> no, it's delicious. I prefer more mayonnaise on my spoon than uh, on my sandwich sometimes. 
But this woman right here got a little bit more than she bargained for when she actually took out her Hellman's real mayonnaise made with cage-free eggs. It says they're right there on the label. Every once in a while, a customer will come forward claiming that they found something uh, out of the ordinary in their food or beverage. Factory errors happen all the time, and sometimes, unwantedly, you could find something in a way of a treat. One woman called out Doritos for leaving this unidentified mass inside of her bag of chips. Oh, I would wish I could find that mass. It's basically a whole bunch of Doritos stuck together with all the, the sprinkles and stuff on top of it. A second uh, commenter said that they exposed Mike's hard lemonade after finding a mouse inside of her drink. All right. Well, that's what are the chances of that? And now another TikToker has used has the same <clears throat> god damn it now another tiktoker has come forward with her own questionable experience with a popular food product mayonnaise what's happening with hellman's in the video posted on october 4th that has reached over eighty thousand views tiktok user emma which goes by cashingoline i don't know these fucking names shared her recent experience with um uh, with her nearly finished Hellman's mayonnaise jar. She's shown that nearly after finishing the contents of the whole entire container, <clears throat> she found a mysteri mysterious object inside of the jar. She said, it looks like an egg. Emma takes the item out of the jar and films her uh, inspecting it. Let's see if we can find her thing here before I give everything away. Let's find her. Let's see. Search. <clears throat> oh god tiktok user tiktok user let's find her oh kasha Golene. got it now <laughs> it's kasha Golene is where she's at tiktok user user kasha Golene. and can i put mayo on there let's see if i can get mayo let's decipher all this stuff oh here she is all right we got her we got her found her all right and don't forget for every podcast video uh every podcast show that we have we have a matching video over on youtube i really don't have a whole lot of visuals for you this week uh but now if you're going to get on to it this would be a great chance to go over there right now and see this video in real time and as far as you know watching me do the whole entire show over on youtube we appreciate that as well so here we go i'm going to turn her up full blast and i'm going to switch to camera four so we can see this and we can all be friends Are we on camera four it's been a, a minute since I've done this. And here she goes. She's opening this mayo, Hellman's mayo. So here we go. Just proof. Brand new container. Brand new container. Which was eight forty nine, dollars by the way. That's good. What? What? This should be $3. No. Max. Uh, brand new container of mayonnaise. I must tell you about what happened to my previous container of mayonnaise. I had a jug that was like slightly bigger than the... It was actually like a Costco size like jug of mayonnaise. Um, that I had used for a while. I would say like a couple months. I feel like mayonnaise doesn't really like go back. I had used like a little bit over half of it and I was scooping it to make like a spicy mayo sauce the other night. Uh huh. And I was like, what is that inside of the container? Okay, this was in the container. I was like, what, what is? So in the bottom of the container, she's, she's doing like this green string, green screen thing. And at the bottom of the container is this brown object at the bottom of the container. And she's like, and it's covered with mayonnaise and stuff. There's still mayonnaise and stuff in the jar. So she's saying, what is this thing? Is that it? I was like, it, it looks like an egg. Here's a little bit and of a closer view. A little closer you can see view. We were like pretty much done with the container. And I want to make note while you're looking at this video here, how, how, <laughs> how not manufactured the Hellman's mayonnaise looks. See how all the air bubbles are in there? You look at Duke's, it's a creamy, it's garbage. It's garbage. This looks like homemade mayonnaise. And of course, and this is real because there's an egg at the bottom of this thing. But I was like, what is that? She Wait, takes it out. That's oh, a full egg. Full egg. Yeah, there was a raw egg in my container of mayonnaise and better yet the yolk was like petrified but the egg was the egg white was still running but the yolk was like a ball of like goop wait i have a video it's not correct but like we don't know it looks good eggs, if there's eggs at all oh it's like
and the egg, the yolk itself is is a dark orange. So those are cage free. That's a that's a sign of cage free eggs. Maybe that's their their test thing that they're like solid. It's like gummy. Yeah, they probably froze it at one time. It's like when, you know when people like salt them? Yes, that's like, exactly what it's like. like. Candy. Yeah. I wonder how often that happens. So yeah, I had to go out and buy an entire new container of mayonnaise. Why? And, like, in the jar, you could see its little like home. And there was like a little indent in the mayo where the egg was living for who literally knows how long. No, thank God none of us got really sick from it because it was a little cracked in there. So good thing nothing like leaked out. <laughs> so she found, all right, go back to me now. She found an actual egg, like a brown chicken egg in the bottom of her con her mayonnaise container and she said she got the big costco one so you know it would have taken her you know a while to get through a gallon not me it would take me a week to get through a gallon of it but you know uh, yeah but you can tell i mean there's a prime example hey they are using real eggs they're re using real cage-free eggs in there and that yolk was nice and dark and orange and believe me i know i got chickens here and uh when you go to a restaurant you see that bright yellow yolk you're like oh nah, these are these are not good eggs and when you see that dark orange uh yolk you're like oh yeah these are these are the ones and so there she goes now this guy right here is taking over my tiktok and uh, the second thing that i could eat a handful of is pickles and there is, you know, there's an art to making pickles. We tried them here at the house. They're just not the same. I, I, I'm a snob. I'm a pickle snob. I appreciate a good pickle, but if I want something that's going to be consistent all the time, I always uh, live up to Mount Olive. And they're shipped out of here, out of North Carolina. I, I, I didn't know this when I was eating them in Florida. My wife loves um was it Vlasic, Classic, Vlasic, or something like that? Ah, you know the the garlic and all that. Nah, I don't need a, I don't need a good deli pickle. I like Mount Olive. Now here at this Renaissance Festival, you've got to have a gimmick to sell your shit. And this gentleman right here, all he's doing is selling pickles. But the gimmick is, it's a whole process, literally a process, selling these pickles. And I'm gonna switch over to camera four so you can see this guy in real time as we're talking about him here. Here he is. It's just, uh, I don't know what the guy's name is. Switch over to here. And it's basically the pickle priest at the uh, New York Renaissance Fair. And he's getting a lot, a lot of videos of the way he processes how you get and buy the pickle. Now, let me give you a little outline for those not watching this on YouTube. And if you're not watching this, shame on you. But he's standing there and he's got a big old whiskey barrel and it's got a garbage bag, you know, as a, you know, as a liner inside there. He actually has a five gallon bucket of pickles and he's, he's pulling those out of there. He's dressed in Renaissance garb. He's got a black uh, hood with a cape on. and He's got like the green elf looking clothes underneath that. And uh, it's just him. He's got a, he's got a little umbrella, a little stand, and that's all he's selling us pickles, but it's the way he sells them. That's getting everyone's attention on TikTok. So here we go. Let's dive into this and find out about the pickle priest. It's a process. He gets the bag out, grabs a pickle, fucks with the crowd a little bit, puts the bag in the or puts the pickle in the bag, twists it around. You you use and use here. Everyone, come over. Stand around the barrel and do this. <laughs> Wave your hands yeah. up and down. <laughs> like your witches. Put your wrists into it. <laughs> You're not a Lego piece. <laughs> I hereby bless these pickles in the name of all things good and pickle. And this guy's probably maybe 30. <laughs> I will have your monies now. <laughs> he wrapped up like five pickles. And uh, yeah, I got one more here. Hold on. Where's the other one at? So this is like a compilation of the pickle priest. And people are standing in line to meet the pickle priest 
uh, just to get this whole ordeal. Now, not for nothing, if you're trying to sell pickles and every time I buy a pickle, it takes 45 seconds to a minute to get a pickle, I'm going to be like, come on, dude, let's, let's, let's skip the fanfare and give me my goddamn pickle. But I'm going to play this, and this is kind of a compilation of the pickle priest and what he actually does. So here we go. Big line. Here you go. <laughs> Huzzah, Tippa! Seven pickles, this one lady asked. No animals were harmed in the making of this product. <laughs> do you see it? I do. Someone took a bite of that one already. That changes nothing. <laughs> Straight face, puts the pickle in the bag. He's got little tongs. And number seven. Sasha. Sasha. What? Sasha. Sasha. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Messing with the audience a little bit. This is pickle number seven for the order. Of Whatever this one is, I don't care. Puts it in the bag. All of you gather around and do this. Wave the hands again. Oh, he burped. <laughs> uh, whatever seven times three is, give me the money. That's it. <laughs> seven times three, give me the money. Uh, let's go back to Mina. Let's get out of this. So he's got a gimmick. He's he's doing his thing. He's having a good time. He's just selling pickles. I don't know if it's his recipe or he worked for a company that, that you know, uh, Bill Vlasic's pistols, pickles. Go out there and sell these pickles, kid. And he created this way, and he's making a whole bunch of, hopefully a lot of money, hopefully a lot of seeing that. So if you see him at the Renaissance Fair, I'd like to take a picture of him and send him over to me. And the way you can get those pictures in, or anything that you guys want to talk to me about, and you, you don't want to go on the air, go over to deacon at profitradio.com, and I'll answer all your emails over there as well. And uh, you can send us pictures and all that, and we'll play them or show them during the podcast as well. All right, guys, on that note, make sure you follow us on, over on YouTube, follow us on TikTok. Not on Facebook yet. Wait until after the election. Not on Instagram or anything like that until after the election. But I think that's for the best. For the best for all of us. But at least I'm... I'm unfortunately, I'm missing all the news and stuff. And But I'll catch up with all you guys uh, through other media sources. All right, guys. On that note, I'm going to let you get back to doing what you got to do. Uh, my name is the Deacon saying goodnight and goodnight. Wait, wait, wait. Come back. This is the end. The absolute end. Pickle. <laughs> Pickle. There you have it. See you, bye.